Hi, and welcome to Upfront. I'm here today with local accessibility advocates, Lynn Dunkley and Allison Duddy, and we're gonna talk a little bit about accessibility in the town of Quinnell. Welcome to Upfront, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael. So would you like to start out by telling our audience a little bit about yourselves? Sure. I'm Lynn. I have lived here since 2006, and when I moved here, I found certain aspects of our town challenging. And it wasn't long after that that I met Allison, and the two of us really clicked, and we started a conversation with each other and other people we knew about things that could use improvement. And our local government at that time spoke a lot about accessibility and inclusion, so it kind of was the birthplace for it all. Excellent. And I'm Allison, and I was born and ra raised in Quinnell here. And I moved away for a time, but shortly after I moved back, I, I met Lynn, and like she said, we started uh, getting on the accessibility and inclusion train and trying to just make things better for everyone that has a disability in Quinnell. And not necessarily just disabilities, too, because access isn't just about uh, people in wheelchairs. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's wonderful. Would you like to elaborate a little bit more about your involvement with uh, the Spinal Cord Injury BC or uh, SPARC? Sure. Spinal Cord Injury BC, I'm the local Quinnell peer coordinator. So I coordinate events, uh, monthly lunches for our peer members that we have in Quinnell. Uh, so we have, like I said, monthly lunches, but we've done events. We've done river rafting, uh, paddle boarding. We did some dog sledding. Uh, we went on a bungee jumping trip, no so oh, wow. we do a number of kind of uh, activities or events, I guess, through, throughout the year, and, and it's always great fun. Oh yeah, what a blast, yeah. Would you like to share uh, some more stories about kind of your personal journeys uh, locally and, and uh, in Canada? Yeah, sure. So uh, I was injured about 30 years ago now, so I've, I've spent some time wheeling around. I was living in Quinnell at the time and accessibility has changed a lot uh, that I've noticed in those 30 years even though I was away for a decade or so. Uh, I have lived in Vancouver for a couple of years. I moved to Penticton uh, to be with my nephew when he was born and then ended up back here in Quinnell. And through curling I've done a lot of traveling across the whole country mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of different uh, events uh, through curling. Most recently, I was just in Ottawa a couple of weeks ago for a oh, bond wow. spiel. So Excellent. it takes me, takes me around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's great to hear. Yeah. yeah. So um, accessibility. I, I wonder about um, what that means to to you specifically. Like, how would you define accessibility personally? I don't think of it as anything special because our needs are not special, because we all need the same thing. We need to shop, we need to get out, we need to go for lunch with our friends or go to the library. And our journey in that and what it means for us and the community, for myself, is really what keeps me busy and active, gets me out of the house. Mm -hmm. And accessibility is not just I think a lot of people have the misconception that if you put a ramp into your business or house or whatever it may be, that you're accessible. But there's so much more that comes into that word of accessibility because, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I can drive my own vehicle, but a lot of people with disabilities don't have transportation. So getting to the where they want to go is important too, to have that transportation. Of course, ramps or access to get into to a business uh, store layout is a big one. This time yeah. of year, especially yeah. Christmas time, stores have lots of stock and so there's stuff piled everywhere and it can make just getting around in a store challenging. Definitely. And then you pick out what you want to buy and you have to go up to the counter and a lots of debit machines are now mounted high up on counters that aren't removable. Uh, so a lot of, I think I always joke that half the people in this town know the pin number of my bank card because I give it to other people to, to use for me in situations when I can't use it myself. So accessibility encompasses a lot of things, not just, like I said, having a ramp into your, uh, into your store or your, your home. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, you know, um, an average community member may not uh, be appreciate, right, might take for granted, right, and, and so someone with a disability may, may you know, 
be faced with a lot of issues, especially in a time like this, you know, that's hectic enough for, for everyone, but there's a lot of things that, that you know, like I say, the, the average community member may miss and, and wouldn't appreciate. So um, just elaborating on, on uh, disabil disability in general, um, I wonder about how you would define disability, because as you mentioned, it is kind of a, a broad topic, right? It is, and that's a tough question to answer. I think in some cases people self-identify as having a disability. I think it can be on a, on a doctor's note, like for the parking permits or things like that. They have to put you in a, in a category, so to speak. I don't think of us, I don't see us as disabled because we're very busy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I mentioned, our needs aren't any different, but our needs are specific to us. And so when you have a person out there who might have sight difficulties or distance walking difficulties, and there's people who have disabilities that are absolutely invisible, and it's those people that are often very much on the outside because people look at them and think, why are you parking in a disabled spot or why do you need certain access? because nobody can see anything. So, so yeah. it's definitely a self-definition def for people. Mm -hmm. I wonder what um, kind of things your group does specifically to enhance the awareness of, of you know, the, the local community and, and people with disabilities. And uh, so yeah, what, what does your group do specifically to kind of promote that awareness? Well, I would say SCIBC probably not as much. However, Lynn and I both sit on the Accessibility and Inclusion Advisory Committee. And I would say that that group in general, we probably do a lot more uh, as far as educating the public on certain issues and bringing awareness to access issues, inclusion issues. Um, because as Lynn said, a lot of people or some people, you know, aren't even able or maybe willing to, to get out of their house that much. And I think mm -hmm. that having a disability at times can can isolate people and so it isn't always just about accessibility and access inclusion is a big part of it you know like Lynn said yeah we want to be able to go out and shop and stuff but we want to do social things too we want to go have lunch with our friends we want to go to dinner and a movie and and things Absolutely. like that um, so do you want to comment on that well when you think of our group if you talk specifically about the accessibility an inclusion committee that we sit on. There are so many different groups that come to the table there. It's not just Allison and I. And we all have our own projects that are near and dear to our heart. Mm -hmm. And we have things that we work on as a group together. One of the things that we're promoting and working on right now and hope to work on right now with BC Parks is an accessible beach project at 10 Mile Lake. So we're just in the very, very early stages of that. But BC Parks has a mandate for accessibility in their 2024 vision of what they want for our province. And that's just mm -hmm. one of the things here. And that's, well, that's 10 Mile. And we have another mm -hmm. member who's really promoting an accessible beach area through with the Legion, through the Legion Beach area there. Yeah. So that there'll be a dock. Yeah. And again, like to, we, then we have the accessible playground that was just built. And Allison and I work on our parking program every month or every year. We've had six now, so lots of different things. Can you think of any other groups that are? Um, well, I know our parking program is definitely a big one for, for you and I. November is a, is a crazy, hectic month for us because that's when we do our, our parking awareness campaign. We have radio ads. Okay. We put out brochures and uh, posters up up in businesses so um, I would say that that's our biggest project together that and longest running yeah. project that we've been working on together so something that we're very proud of and I really do see that it's made a lot of difference Absolutely. Um, the city yeah. has been fantastic about following through with some of our recommendations uh, I think the first year that we started it we went around and took pictures of every city accessible parking spot in town and Lynn and I went through them together and said, okay, what's good about this parking spot? What's bad about this parking spot? And we had a picture and we had what's good and what's bad. And we ended up with probably 10 or 15 pages that we sent to the city. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, the biggest problem were, was that they have the blue wheelchair painted on the ground, 
but there was no actual signage on a post saying that it was an accessible spot. So as soon as you get a little bit of skiff of snow, it's a free for all for those spots because you can't see the, the wheelchair on the ground anymore. And now if you go around every single city spot in the, in the city of Quesnel has forward facing signage. Um, and actually I just noticed tonight when I was at the curling club, uh, because the arena spots were the exception for the new arena. Okay. Uh, the developer actually didn't take that into consideration, but when I pulled in there tonight, they have nice cement barriers with forward-facing uh, post signage for the spots in the new arena as well. So, uh, yeah, and they've also, the blue paint uh, was a big addition to all of the accessible spots. I think that was last year that they did that. And the cost to uh, illegally park in a disabled spot has gone up, the fines. And so yeah, so the city has really um, been on board with our vision uh, to educate the public uh, and bring about more awareness about the use and misuse of those parking spots. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. seen a lot of growth and progress in the mm -hmm. right areas, Definitely. right? So seeing in some big differences years. made. Yeah. And we've had a lot of comments just from the general public. I've had total strangers come up to me and say, oh, I heard you're out on the radio and I never thought if I parked too close to your car that you wouldn't be able to get in. And just things like that, you know, just mm -hmm. sort of that light bulb moment that, that people have. Yeah. And when they tell me that, it's like, I know that person wouldn't do it, at, you know, again. And, mm -hmm. and it's a good feeling, you know, I feel like we're making a difference, yeah. so. But the important thing is we're making it through education. Right? You, mm -hmm. yeah. you catch more bees with honey with <laughs> aspect, right? Yes. You know, we do our best to educate yeah. people so that they'll know, we, we act on the premise that they don't know and there will be people you will never change, yeah. then those people we're not really even worried about because you can't change them. But the people who need to understand what the rules are for the parking and what the reasons are for the big areas, why do we need these big spaces, things like that, mm -hmm. that's been the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. so you touched on, on a few things that you know, uh, the general public is, is kind of doing to become more aware. So I now throw it to a question from Lori Ann Rudenberg uh, of the West Quinnell Business Association. She's the current president. So, My name is Lori Ann Rudenberg. I'm the executive director of the West Quinnell Business Association. I have two questions this morning to ask of the Accessibility Committee. First one, as a whole, what can the community do to increase the awareness of accessibility issues throughout our community? And the second one is, what sort of education opportunities do you offer businesses to help enhance accessibility throughout their stores and in the community? One of the sources for information could be the Rick Hansen Foundation, their organization. You can find them online and they're a great wealth of information for grants or access or what's out there as well. And another uh, great resource person that we have in spinal cord, in spinal cord injury, BC, excuse me, is Heather Lamb. And she runs our, our info line. I don't have the number handy, but I can definitely get it for you. Mm -hmm. And um, you can certainly give Heather a call. She's got a huge database of resources on a vast number uh, of topics. I know whenever I have a question, you know, hey Heather, what are the statistics on, you know, how many people fall downstairs in, in BC in one year? And the next day I've got an email from her with the numbers, like she's, she's really good um, as far as um, having a lot of resources that she can look at. So she would definitely be a, a good resource person there. She's wonderful. I asked her a grant question a while back and the following day I had an email with six different areas to go for grants for me to look at for a project that I'm working on. One thing that I feel will be very valuable and we've touched on this with the city people and we will definitely go into it a bit more is some sort of link on their web page. Their web page is developing and changing with the new brand and that a link for accessibility that our hotels and motels could tie into, hey, we've got great accessible rooms, or this trail is great, or our pool is great, these kinds of things. And if we could work with the city on their webpage, and that's a project that's in the future, it's not happening right now at this point in time, mm -hmm. that'll be a super source for not just locals, but anybody wanting to come and visit or looking to move here. If I'm disabled and I want to move to Quenelle, what does it have to offer me? But most of all, for access and things like that, if a young person is injured, we want to keep them in our community. Sure, go get educated if you need to, but come back. 
you know, we don't want to lose them. But if we don't have things to offer people who have disabilities, they'll leave. If someone's beginning a new project, no matter what it is, take accessibility and inclusion into account in the ground, from the ground up. Let's not be retrofitting. Let's yeah. not be looking backwards and going, oh, well, if we built it wider or if we'd done this, it would have been better. And we have been fortunate that our group has been asked to sit in and look at plans and give input on different things. We were allowed to important. see some of the housing project plans. You know, look at this for accessibility, for parking, what do you see? We were able to give comment and input in that. And I think that's respect yeah. from that we've earned uh, our group has earned because we're still there, we're still working, and this it, building that we're sitting in today is, is proof. <laughs> this is right. the the new downtown association Spirit Square building yeah. with the accessible washroom project. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we we got to sit down ahead of time, see the plans, see you know what it was going to look like ahead of time, and have input into you know what we thought was going to work and what wasn't going to work so um, yeah yeah it's been it's been really rewarding quite honestly yeah that's great mm -hmm. great to hear um, so i'd questions. like to throw it to an audience question so uh, kim mciver a local community member had a question about uh, local accessibility uh, for availability of indoor and outdoor activities so take it away kim my name's Kim McIver, and I was injured in a motor vehicle accident just over three years ago. And I would like to ask the question, what's available for a resident Quinnell, of Quinell for indoor and outdoor activities that will enhance physical development and a love for the outdoors? So that was a question from Kim McIver, a local community member, about uh, getting more involved in indoor and outdoor activities and, and really participating actively. So if I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, first off, let me start with our recreation center. If you want to be active and just be around other people, it's got wonderful access to get in for programming that they offer. They've got amazing accessibility in there. And I think we have one of the best accessible gyms to go for a workout or a stretch or whatever it is that you need to do in almost the province. Wow. There's not many places that have all of the available equipment that we do. We've got the universal gym, we've got a stand and glide frame, we've got a hand cycle that also will cycle your legs, huge stretching mat, free weights, and a real understanding of the people who work there because they worked with us for so long on what we need. And when we have an idea of what's needed, they listen, they listen and, and they help us reach out for more. And that's just, that's just in the gym, mm -hmm. right? The, the pool is excellent as well. They have that awesome track system that goes right from the change rooms all the way to the pool and you can reach the hot tub as well. And they have a, an accessible changing table that you can raise and lower depending on uh, some people are in higher chairs, if it's maybe a power chair. Some people are in lower chairs like ours, so you can put it to your level so that you have a nice smooth uh, transfer onto the changing table. Um, they have opening automatic doors at their front door, at the weight room, um, and into the family changing room where, where the accessible change. Oh, all the changing room. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah, they're, I think it was Diane Rogers really started these projects and really sort of was very forward thinking and mm -hmm. at looking about ac uh, looking into accessibility for the rec center, applying for grants, and now Richard Gauthier has moved into her position since her retirement this past June, and I think that you know Diane sort of mentored him uh, perhaps a little bit in this because Richard seems to be continuing on, um, you know, with her sort of legacy and, and looking forward to to new projects that he can bring accessibility to the rec center as well. So. But not just the projects, the programming as well. We had the opportunity often to knock on her door and speak with Taryn Lefebvre, who works there. She does the programming that Richard used to do. Okay. And she says, what kinds of things would you like? What are you interested in? A yoga bench would be wonderful, you know, to, to not have to get somebody to hoist you up and down off the floor, things like that. I'm always pushing for a yoga bench. 
but to just be asked, I think, is really important. But mm -hmm. that, I mean, and that's just our recreation center. I heard a while ago there was some talk of another bowling alley going to be built up in the south end of town, but I haven't heard any more about that. Mm -hmm. An accessible bowling alley would, would be wonderful. Yeah. We've got lots of outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. There was a time a while back at the, what's the lake where the wonderful trail is, where they cross country ski? Hallis Lake. Hallis Lake, yeah. where there had been some talk about getting a sit ski for cross country skiing okay. to have it in the rental. Because it's, if you've never done it and never thought, well, if I really want to be active, you're not going to go buy a sit ski first. It's nice to be able to rent them, just like skis, right? Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that that will come to fruition at some point in time. We have a great trail system around Quinnell. Uh, Lynn and I very often in the summer, uh, generally we, we park at Seal Tingley and kind of branch out from there. Maybe, you know, go around the trail this way or go over the walking bridge and do some of the west side trails. Uh, so that's definitely... Uh, you know, a really good way of being able to be outdoors and, and keep fit and, and that kind of thing. It's a good social time for us too to, to catch up because we both have busy lives doing other things as well. So it's a nice time to get together and, and to be able to catch up. Our new arena or that we've mentioned uh, mm -hmm. is, is wonderfully accessible. Lynn and I both were there for the opening night concert and the, the hockey game the day after. So it was great to be able to go in and, and check it out and the elevator and the seating and, and stuff like that. So And to be able to go upstairs, not mm -hmm. to be forced to just be at ground level because you couldn't get anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And then the you can wheel up there as well. Like it's a, there's a walking track up there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nice so walk. you can be active there. And as yeah. well, the soccer pitch, right? Yes. That in, you can wheel inside or walk yeah. and wheel inside yeah. at the soccer pitch. Mm -hmm. So opportunities to stay active in the winter, which is a challenge when you're in a wheelchair. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. That's great to hear that there are those opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, Cornell is such a beautiful community. So to have that accessible for everyone is essential. Yeah. Well, those yeah. are just our physical things. You know, our movie theater has some good spots if you need access. And even though there's no slope in there right now, which I'm really hoping will change with the Reed Street expansion, mm -hmm. but they put a, a ramp right out there for you really quickly if oh, you yeah, need. They're more than happy. They're, they're really happy. And they are, got the yeah. ramp out and so that you can get up that, that one little step that they have. And our restaurants are wonderfully accommodating, you know, to make you feel you, you're not a big spectacle if they've got to move tables around or things. So you can just go out and be social with your family, your husband and your friends. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Are there other ways that uh, you guys are, are informing or educating local businesses and to be more supportive to the community? I would say that we more come across that in our parking program as far as dealing with the local businesses and things like that. Although the new downtown Reed Street uh, and Barlow Street revamp that they're going to be doing next year, we've definitely had a little bit of, of input on that. And it would be, there are... I would say at least a handful of businesses on either side of the streets um, that have little bumps up into their business or little bumps down into their business mm -hmm. and then you're trying to you're on a downslope and you're trying to back up while you're opening a door uh, and things like that so it will be really nice to see um, some of those issues I guess you would say rectified yeah. when they when they do the Reed Street um, thing and also we did have some businesses take part in some funding that was available through yes, the it was for automatic doors and i think we had i think it was seven or eight businesses that were able to dip into this funding and it was a 60 40 split where where the business owner uh, or landlord in mm -hmm. some cases um, would pay the 40 percent and and the rest would come from 60 percent wow. so we do have um, a handful of new business or businesses along reed street that, that took that opportunity and now have uh, automatic doors into their uh, places of business, which definitely is a big bonus when you're in our situation. Sometimes, you know, we've got packages on our lap or big purses or what have you, and it's, you know, it's sometimes hard to lean forward and, and, and open the door. So if you've got that button that you can push, it just makes life a lot easier at Absolutely. times. And there are some people that have, you know, even more of a challenge opening doors on their own. So to have the buttons uh, wherever we can, it, it, it definitely helps. Sure. Well, the buttons help not just people like us, though. Yeah. You take a mom with one of those big strollers that they have nowadays, and she's got a child maybe in the stroller, a little one in tow, all her bags. 
to be able to press a button like that and get into a store is wonderful. Or a delivery man with all his boxes. <laughs> so so there's that old phrase, if you make something accessible to somebody in a wheelchair, you open it up to the whole world. So uh, how, has, how has accessibility sort of evolved in the community and, and generally uh, just as a, as a concept in, in the past? Uh, what things have you guys been a part of and, and what uh, areas have you really seen some positive things? I can speak to that because I was, mm -hmm. I was here uh, living in Quinnell when, when I was injured. And like I said that earlier, that was 30 years ago. So when I was first injured in 1987, um, there was no such thing as curb cuts. And so anywhere that I wanted to go in, in town, had, I had to go with someone because I couldn't get up and down the sidewalks on my own. Exactly, and accessible washrooms. I mean, that wasn't even a thought in someone's head at that time. And I think really it was 1987 where we started to see um, people start to thinking about, about accessibility issues. And that was when Rick Hansen did his Man in Motion World Tour. And I remember when he came through Quinnell in May of 1987, and, and I never, of course, dreamed that in November of 1987, I would end up in this situation. So I've seen a lot of changes. I, did, I moved away for a decade. However, I mean, now you can go almost anywhere. I don't think curbs are, are an issue anywhere in this town that, that, that I can go anywhere on my own. And just to be able to do that, um, is huge. So that's probably, I would say, one of the biggest changes that I've noticed in, in, in the last 30 years. And also just in the way our city thinks. Like, you know, it, it's taken some time, but as Lynn mentioned earlier, we've been able to sit on uh, in on design plans for like the new arena or the new housing project or this wonderful accessible downtown washroom that we have here. Whereas even probably eight or nine years ago, I don't think that that um, you know, would have happened. So it's just great to have a really um, forward thinking and accessibility sort of minded um, city that, that's willing to work with us um, you know, on some of these projects and, and making Quinnell as accessible as we can. So. We get phone calls quite regularly from different groups that are going to be making changes. I know the Communities for Veterans program, Terry and Paul Nichols, they're working on a really big accessibility project at their farm for people that come to their programming or even to their bed and breakfast, I suppose, too, because they also have Penny Britain bed and breakfast. And CHAPS, that's where we ride at CHAPS. I'm a volunteer at CHAPS as well as a client. I ride there. But Communities for Veterans, they're working on ways to have equipment for people to be able to get to all areas of their property, to be able to stay there as well. And their needs will encompass a huge variety of disabilities and abilities, right? Because we're dealing with veterans that may have all manner of different physical needs. Yeah. So that's one that I know of. One of the things that we're also working on with our Accessibility Advisory Committee is called a paramill. And that is a piece of equipment that we've gotten word will be uh, going into the, the weight room at the rec center. And what it basically is, I guess, in sort of layman's terms, is it's a treadmill for a wheelchair. So we can be stationary, but still be getting that exercise. One of the things that um, a lot of people that, especially in particular, that are in wheelchairs, you do a lot of forward pushing. So your muscles across your, the front of your chest are very well developed, however, across the back um, tend to be not quite as developed. So for me personally, I'm looking forward to it because I can get on there and I can do a lot of backwards wheeling. Because for the, for the same reaction that you do all of this, um, the backwards motion um, is gonna develop the opposite muscles. Yeah. And so that is one project that we're really looking forward to, to being put in the gym. And it, it's taken a little bit of sort of finagling as fi far as finding room for it in the gym because it is a larger piece of equipment. But again, uh, Richard and Taryn at the rec center have been fantastic. And so yeah, we're looking forward to that one. It'll be a good piece of equipment for able-bodied mm -hmm. people as well. Because all they have to do is, you know, we're hoping we can get a wheelchair that other people can use that will stay at the gym. And you, there's lots of able-bodied people who play wheelchair basketball. It's an amazing upper body workout. So for them to go and train like that will be, so it's an all-round piece of equipment. It'll just be another education piece, letting yes. them know that it's there.
didn't you do an audit for Cottonwood House? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was uh, a number you know, of years they'll, ago. They'll say, we're going to be changing our washrooms, we're going to be doing this, would you come and have a look at it? Mm -hmm. Even the Fraser Health, not Fraser Health, um, where Glenn's office is, Fraser View Pharmacy, and he was making some changes in there, the pharmacist, and he had to change for where the washroom was going to be. He asked me to come and look at the space. So it speaks to our involvement in the community, one, that people know who we are, so that they can ask us if we'll come or do we have information for them, and two, that we're willing. You know, we, we have a vested interest in our home. It's an important role that you play, right? It's, it's the focal point for uh, a, a group that, that needs to be involved, right? And, and it's, it's um, you know, I would say, an honorable position and, and role that, that you fulfill within the community. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's excellent, excellent and it's essential, right? And, you know, people need to involve the, the community that, that they are providing for, right? And so, to have you guys as, as that voice is, is fantastic. So yeah, it's, it's an honor speaking with you here. <laughs> I'm enjoying the time. So. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. I'm Michael Benoit, and this has been Upfront.